So I chose this swamp scene with lots of dynamic range and all kinds of interesting rich detail to illustrate how I use HDRFX Pro 2 to get the results that I want. The first step in getting these image files ready to go to Nick is to select all three, in this case, of the image files for the swamp scene. Then I want to go into the develop module and perform what I call standard maintenance. And I went over that in detail in the first video, but just as a reminder, I set the white balance, the detail, which is sharpening and luminance noise reduction, and then lens correction and camera calibration. Those are the four things that I will change in one of the files. Last thing is, is you want to sync those settings to the other files. Back to the library module in Lightroom with the three same images chosen. Go to the bottom lower left hand corner of the screen and select export. A dialog box will come up asking you what you want to do with the images. In this case we're going to choose Google and HDR Effects Pro 2. These options are what I use. I want it, the image format to be a TIFF. I want the color space to be Pro Photo RGB. No compression and the bit depth to be 16 bits. Once again hit export. The first dialog box that will appear in FX Pro is the merge dialog box. It will always show you how many exposures you're trying to merge together. And on the side, on the right side, are some options. First, I check alignment, even if I'm using a tripod. The second one is ghost reduction. If I am using a tripod and there's nothing moving in the scene, I will uncheck that. Third one is chromatic aberration. I always check that button. It always makes a good difference. And then finally, create HDR. HDR Effects Pro is actually quite simple if in the preset library you choose default. That's the very first one on the upper left hand corner. Now what you're going to do to mix some of the highlights with the shadows is you take the tone compression which is in the upper right hand corner and I typically find it helpful to go somewhere between 40 and 50 percent on most images. The HDR method I leave the depth at normal, the detail at realistic, and drama I fluctuate between deep and normal or natural that is. In this case I'm choosing natural. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you look at your histogram way at the bottom of the dialog box and that'll tell you if you have some highlights that are blown. Well if you want to add a little contrast to this I typically grab the curve at the bottom and here's where you can add just the right amount of contrast based on your liking. You can also change the overall density of this by grabbing the curve and lowering it. Now that's about what I wanted. I'll look at the histogram at the bottom, make sure I have no clipped blacks or clipped highlights on either side. Okay, the file is then re-imported back into Lightroom and stacked with the other three files. Something to point out here, I'm going to go back into develop module and look at the histograms. I want to show you the difference in the histograms between the three files used to generate this HDR with. First one is the underexposed file. This one is two stops under normal and you can see here the shadows are blocked up but at the same time the highlights are blown. Then I look at the overexposed file. Here you can see all the shadows are not blocked up. There's plenty of detail in those shadows However, the highlights are totally blown. Then, this is probably the most telling image file of all because this is what gives me the clue to actually run this scene through HDR or, in the first place, bracket while I'm on the scene. And that is, the, in the normal exposed file, the shadows are blocked up. At the same time, the highlights are blown. And the very last step in this workflow is to come back into the develop module with the file that I created in NIC HDR FX Pro 2 and the first thing I want to show you is look at this histogram. I've got beautiful detail in the shadows, no clipped highlights. In fact, I need to take the white slider and bump it over just a tiny bit so that I get nice contrast in that upper end. Now one of my moves that I make is I'll drag the whole curve down just to make the whole thing richer and you'll get more color when it's darker and then I'll grab a brush tool and w by adding a half a stop exposure with a little bit of clarity I'm just going to be able to reveal parts of this image 
based on my own personal preference of where I think I want the viewer's eye to go. In this case, it's going to go right in between some of these tupelo trees right there and thus give it a little more depth by having highlighting some areas that are off in the distance. And that's it. I'll be back in the third part of this series of videos showing you how to create a 32-bit editable file in Lightroom through either HDR Soft Software or Photoshop HDR.